Hi, this is Mark Eccles from Google Cloud's Apigee. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Edge Micro command line interface to configure the Edge Micro Gateway in a variety of topologies. I'll then cover some common issues encountered during this process and how to troubleshoot them. An interesting fact about Edge Micro Gateway is that it depends on and operates together with Apigee Edge, either with public cloud or with your own on-premise cluster. Now, you may have a question. Why does Edge Micro Gateway need to interact with Apigee Edge? There are three reasons. Firstly, when Edge Micro Gateway boots up, it pulls the list of deployed Edge Micro Aware proxies and all the API products from the Apigee Edge organization. It then builds an internal mapping of base paths to proxies so that it can identify which target to invoke for a given URL. This process also happens periodically when the Micro Gateway is running. Thus, it's always in sync. Secondly, analytics data is asynchronously pushed to Apigee Edge so that Micro Gateway traffic can be tracked in the API analytics dashboards. Finally, the OAuth plugin invokes Apigee Edge to verify API keys or access tokens. So how can we make Edge Micro Gateway operate with Apigee Edge? Edge Micro Gateway can be configured to operate with any instance of Apigee Edge, public or private cloud, using the command line interface. The configuration process involves three steps. These are initialization, configuration, and verification. I'll now walk through the configuration process one step at a time and explain what happens when the Edge Micro Gateway is configured. The first step is the Edge Micro init command, which creates default.yaml in the .edgemicro folder underneath the home directory. This step only needs to be run once per machine. This file contains the default Edge Micro Gateway configuration settings. Most of these defaults will be overridden later when we run the Edge Micro configure command for a specific org and environment. The next step is the Edge Micro configure command. This command enables Edge Micro Gateway to operate with Apigee Edge. It internally performs a series of commands. First, it deploys the authentication proxy, Edge Micro Auth, to Apigee Edge. Then, it generates a public and private key pair required for authenticating with Apigee Edge. Next, it creates a YAML file called orgname-environment-config.yaml. It then downloads Edge configuration and stores that in another YAML file, orgname-environmentname-cache-config.yaml. And finally, if connectivity to Apigee Edge succeeded, it generates a key and secret that are needed to start the Edge Micro Gateway. The Edge Micro Verify command verifies whether Edge Micro Gateway has been configured properly for the specific organization and environment. The Verify command simulates tasks such as fetching the API proxy details and API products, fetching the public key, uploading analytics data to Apigee Edge, and invoking the quota service. It ensures they are all working as expected. If any of these steps don't report an OK status, then something may be misconfigured. This concludes the three configuration steps. Now time for a demo. This machine has never been configured with an Edge Micro Gateway before. It has Node.js version 10 installed and has version 3.x of Edge Micro. I will now run Edge Micro init to kick things off. The configuration file was initialized with the default settings. Now I run Edge Micro configure. Since I'm using Apigee Edge Cloud, I'll specify the organization, environment, username, and password. This seems to have gone well. The command has provided a key and secret which must be used to start the micro gateway. It's important to store these somewhere safe. Note also that the additional config file was now created. This is the specific configuration for this org and environment. It overrides the defaults. As you may have seen in the TLS configuration for Edge Micro Gateway videos, this is where TLS configuration can be applied. 
Finally, to check that everything is working, I'll run edge micro verify. This command also requires the same key and secret generated earlier. Cool, everything is reporting as okay. The micro gateway should be fully functional. So, we just learned about the different steps and the CLI commands involved in the configuration process. Now, let me show you the variations of the edge micro configure command that you would need to use depending on whether you would like to operate on premise or on cloud, and whether you'll be using SAML or Apogee's built in identity provider. Here's the first one public cloud using Apigee as identity provider. This is the most common one, and we can use the default options with edge micro configure command as shown here. In this, the basic auth, that is, the username and password are used to authenticate with Apigee Edge. This must be an org admin user. You can also configure edge micro gateway with public cloud using SAML to federate with your own identity provider. Here we need to first authenticate with your IDP to obtain an access token, then pass that token using the minus T option to the edge micro configure command. Similarly, we can configure edge micro gateway with private cloud using the built-in identity provider, which is LDAP. Here, we need to additionally specify the runtime and management endpoints for the private cloud installation. Lastly, this is how you configure Edge Micro Gateway with Private Cloud using SAML. Same as the previous one, except that we pass the token instead of the username and password. Since Edge Micro Gateway needs to communicate with the Apigee Edge management server, keep in mind the following. For public cloud, you need to ensure the machine where you are running Edge Micro Gateway on has the outbound internet connectivity. And for private cloud, ensure the machine has connectivity to the on-premise Apigee virtual host and management server. All right, we've covered the main concepts around the configuration process. Now let's look at some common issues. Typically, you may see connectivity, 404, and authorization errors during the configuration process. One of the most common errors that you will see is error cannot post. This occurs when there is an error while communicating with Apigee Edge. The stack trace may vary, and you will sometimes see a message underneath the stack trace that gives more clues to what went wrong. These are the three most common causes for this error. Invalid domain name specified in the management server URL. This is specified by the minus M flag when using private cloud. A lack of outbound connectivity from the machine to Apigee Edge or the Edge Micro Management Server is configured with an invalid SSL certificate. This would typically happen when using private cloud because Google manages the public cloud management API endpoints for you. The second most commonly seen error is unable to identify proxy for host, which results in a 404 response code. This error can occur if the Edge Micro Auth proxy is not deployed on the specific environment where you are trying to configure Edge Micro Gateway. To resolve that, you'll need to deploy the latest revision of the Edge Micro Auth proxy. The Edge Micro Auth proxy is not configured to accept the requests on the specific virtual host. To resolve this, you will need to modify the proxy endpoint of Edge Micro Auth proxy to accept requests on the specific virtual host. The Edge Micro Auth proxy is configured with a custom base path. Either modify the base path to use the default path, Edge Micro auth, or modify the YAML config file to point to the customized base path. Authorization errors are another common issue observed with Edge Micro Gateway. This typically happens if you incorrectly pass username and password for SAML enabled orgs, where instead you should be passing the token using the minus T parameter. Remember that a token must be passed instead of username and password for SAML enabled orgs. In this video, we learned about the purpose of Edge Micro Gateway configuration and how to configure it with public and private cloud using the CLI. We also explored the various problems that can occur when configuring Edge Micro Gateway. We hope this leads you on the way to success with deploying and serving APIs via the Edge Micro Gateway. Thank you and stay tuned for our upcoming videos.